live. And we are live. Yes. Hello, my friends. My name is Evelyn Joy and welcome back to my channel. I finished this Mod Podge. Um, today I'm going to add in some stars, but for the most part, I'm done. I showed in my last video how I was beginning to make it. Um, what I did was I bought this. Oh, it's a little bit still drying too. I bought this set of um, planets from Dollar Tree for a dollar and you're supposed to color them in and make a mobile. But what I did was I painted them and then I glued them to, well, I, I used Mod Podge and attached black paper to my canvas. Um, and then I attached using glue Mod Podge, but you can use glue um, to here. And then I went over it with Mod Podge. Um, so you can see it has that lovely gloss over it. And then after that, I'm going to um, paint some yellow stars, perhaps during this video, perhaps not. If you watched my other video, you saw I did an activity with my kids. We took those free ads that you get in the mail. I don't know if your city has that, but our city, once a month or so, we get like a ton of advertisements for grocery stores and stuff and in them are a lot of foods and I was thinking um that I could make a collage of food and so while I was cutting it out my kids wanted to participate and they got excited and then they said mommy can you cut some out for our dollies and I said sure why not they said can we cut and I'm like I don't have kids scissors right now so no but I let them pick out what they wanted me to um, cut for them. So I got like little foods for them and they played with their dollies with that. And that's in my video. So anyway, with VIP kid, we talk about food a lot in several different units with younger kids. We talk about different kinds of foods with older kids. We talked about healthy and unhealthy. There's even units about American food and Chinese food. So anyway, I'm going to use some Mod Podge. Mod Podge. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to use the Mod Podge. Um, on here to stick it on and so everything will be in place having used Mod Podge or you use stick glue or tape or whatever you want but really Mod Podge since I have a lot of it it's going to be perfect for this but then after I have the whole thing filled up how I want it then I'll go over the whole thing with the Mod Podge so I'm going to start off with one item one of my I'm going to start off with my bigger items my bigger pictures and then I'm going to fill in from there so that I can point to different things on the picture and say, you know, is this healthy or unhealthy? And, you know, ask them, what's your favorite foods? So which, which of these foods do you like? Which of these foods don't you like, you know? So this Mod Podge was um, given to me by my mother, sort of. After my mom passed away two years ago, we um, cleaned out not cleaned out. We we got some things out of her house before the bank repossessed her house, basically. And um, so we kind of cleaned and went through a few things and got a few things. And I got some craft supplies. And one of them was this huge container of Mod Podge. And I did not open it and use it until today. So it's funny when you have a loved one that dies, it's kind of like you want to hold on to their things because, because you you want to not forget them but then at the same time it's this bizarre thing of where you feel like you shouldn't use their things but my mom was very much a person who was preparing for a time of crisis like we have now and so she would be very proud of me that I was using the things she left behind during this time of crisis so it's like suddenly Suddenly, I feel free to use all these things that are in a bag of craft supplies from her house. I'm like, she would want me to use it, especially during a difficult financial time in our country. But she was literally, she was preparing for this kind of thing because she was gardening and she was like learning how to can and dry things. And she was like, conversations we had back then to be prepared for now. <laughs> so there we have sandwich. Doesn't that look so nice? I think this is going to be a really neat collage. Um, 
Next thing I want to put is some strawberries. So since the strawberries have that nice square edge on it, I'm going to put it in the other bottom corner. Figuring it out as I go along. Um, that's the kind of artist I am. Some people, they have to have a plan ahead of time. They have to have everything, you know, mapped out, planned out. Me, I begin with an idea. And as I begin it, I create. I'm a creative person. I'm not by any means a type A person. I'm, I just know type, I don't even know if I'm talking about that right. I know type A people are very like structured and perfectionists and want everything like clean and neat and tidy and planned and everything. That's very much opposite my personality. So those kind of people um, tend to not like to share a home with me. <laughs> Hello, Cindy Palmer. Okay, yeah, you are a creative person like me. I can tell from watching you talk about your art. So this is how the first project turned out. And I am going to paint stars on here, but probably after, like, when this is drying, then I'll work on that, depending on when my kids need me. Right now, my husband is home. It's his day off work. My baby is sleeping. My kids are eating lunch and watching TV. Judge me if you want. <laughs> and I am crafting. So I'm going to put these grapes in this corner. Won't that look nice? Anyway. Yeah. Evelyn, you are the streaming queen. Oh, well. Well, okay. I escape to my office <laughs> to get away from my kids. Um, I'm a social butterfly, but I'm a stay-at-home mom. So, like... I like sharing. If I'm doing a craft or cooking something, I'm like, why don't I share this? Maybe somebody else will want to do this, right? Maybe this is something fun somebody else will want to do too. And if I can chat with friends while I'm doing something fun, even better. But oh gracious, can I just say, no, I don't even, can I just say, I just, I wish all the playgrounds weren't shut down. And I understand the reason why I get it. I agree with it. I just wish the whole world hadn't fallen apart. You know, the whole, the sky is falling thing. It's kind of like the sky fell on our heads and now we're kind of figuring out where we move on from here. Right. Um, and it's funny because kids are so resilient because I get sad having to explain to them that we can't go to the park or the zoo or the museum or the mall or any of, or they can't even go to the grocery store with me. Like we can't go any of the places they like. And I get sad having to explain that to them. And then they comfort me. <laughs> Kids are so resilient. They're like, yeah, mom, but we have, but we have plants. <laughs> Because I'm like trying to do a garden, trying to try spinning my wheels, trying to turn this whole experience into a positive thing. And then my kids are like, it's okay, mom. It's okay that we can't go to the mall. Well, it, next year for Easter, we'll go to the mall. <laughs> and they're like, it's okay, mom. We have plants. <laughs> I'm like, you're like now trying to comfort me with the things I was trying to do to make everything better it's so funny how kids I, I see in them how when I was a kid I just always wanted to protect my mom from being sad because I unfortunately saw my mom sad a lot when I was a kid and that really affected me so I try to not be fake happy but I try to you know suck it up for my kids and be positive not fake but try to think positive think positive thoughts but it gets to me when my kids, when my two-year-old doesn't get it and he has to go to the playground every single day. So, oh, anyway, sorry guys, but kids are, kids are resilient. They're like, yeah, but we have plants. <laughs> if they can survive me, we shall see. He said, LOL, love it. I stay at home, but no kids. I'm going crazy. Don't blame me one bit. Yeah. The thing is like, it's just sad when I do finally get out of the house every once in a while, driving past even the small parks and how they're fenced off by that orange fencing, it's just sad that a government can tell us we can't take our kids to the park. And I realize the reason why I get it. I, I agree with it. I just don't like it. 
<laughs> I understand the circumstances that have caused this, and I am so so. I don't. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I'm so thankful that we're health. My kids are healthy, and my family's healthy. So 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 thankful for our health mo now more than ever. But I wish our world wasn't going through this. And so anyway, the you know some people. <laughs> Some people drink. I do crafts. <laughs> this is my this is my drinking. <laughs> Just kidding, but but seriously, this is my outlet. I should say it, it's a better addiction. I must say, <laughs> our beach is closed. It is literally my front yard, and the police have kicked us from walking on it. Oh, and it, yeah. So many, and it, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but with our older kiddos that, um, with VIP kid, our older students that like to communicate with us, you know, we like to talk to them about what's going on in their lives, what's going on in our lives. After a month of staying home, it's becoming progressively harder not to talk about it with my students. So I've been, what I've been doing is showing them my artwork. So now I have more artwork to show them, especially my regulars that I've taught like 95 classes to. It's hard not to talk about negative things. So I show them my artwork, right? <sighs> anyway, with the younger kids, it's easy. Okay, so talking positive, I have to tell you guys a really positive experience I had today. Okay, here's a lovely looking tomato I'm going to put on here somewhere. I think I'm going to put it right here. So, um, today my first class of the day, I waited in the classroom the whole time with my camera off and the student never showed. It ended up being a student no show. That was fine. So during that time I was, I was painting these little planets. So there's a tomato. I love how this, it's like they did the art for me. I'm just like collaging it together. It's so brightly colored and I didn't have to paint it or, or, or this is a different form of art, but it's something I can use in my classroom and, and it's less trash I'm throwing away, right? I'm making art out of it. How often do we talk about bread? Anyway, my second class of the day, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, last night I had a headache. Um this yesterday I had a headache this morning you know I woke up like an hour earlier than I needed to and I never went back to sleep um I used the bathroom I breastfed my baby played a game on my phone then I came up and I had one class to teach so basically when my second class was gonna come I wasn't feeling real super enthusiastic you know not real super into teaching English, super happy. But then I heard my student and her mom before class. And it was a little like four and a half year old little girl and her mom and they were giggling and they were so excited. And I'm thinking how long have these people have been in quarantine and they're so excited for English class. And they were practicing saying hello. And they were practicing saying baby. I I think I might have shown them a glimpse of my baby at the end of class last time. I've done that with a few of my students and they were like so excited and saying like baby and stuff. And I'm like, uh oh, I hope they don't ask to see my baby because he's downstairs with daddy. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, they didn't. Then I realized it was an Egypt class and um, where do I have it? Yeah, because I wore it. So it's over here. So I have my Egypt headdress and so anyway, she was on the screen. It was a few minutes before class. So I had my camera off, their camera on, so I could see them. So I started playing. I, I could use the AR stickers on her. I started playing with the AR stickers with her and drawing hearts and smiley faces on the screen. And she and her, her mom were just giggling and so happy and so excited for English class. And so I, you know, I started off with my... Um, I grabbed my my Minnie Mouse ears and my dino puppet. So when I turned on the camera, I was like, hello, how are you? You know, and it was so exciting. Their energy passed off onto me. And I was like, they're excited for English class. And they've been quarantined like four times as long as me. 
and way more intensely because I can go to the grocery store and they can't. So, you know, if they can be excited and happy and enthusiastic, so can I. So anyway, I wanted to say that my student and her mom without, they didn't even know it, but they encouraged me to be enthusiastic for class today. And then because we started off the class with that positive energy, it kept going the whole class. And then it went on to my next class, which I only had three bookings today. I only taught two, which I was thankful for because honestly, I needed a break. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit burnt out. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit like I don't want to fake happy. I want to be actually happy. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Uh, so I've got Cindy Bennett, Cindy Palmer, and Amy Lou here. Hello. It's nice to also jump on and have little chit chats with friends. Cindy Bennett just sent me pictures that she got new little baby chicks. So they're going to have chickens. She already had a chicken coop. So they're... um setting that up to have chickens again. They've had chickens in the past. Me and my family, chickens will not be something we do, but gardening we will do. <laughs> yes. Hey, Cindy. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what you're saying. LOL. I love it. Okay. Yeah. I already read that. Um, yes. Amy, Amy said, hey, Cindy. Yeah, it does. Because I am staring at it all day. At least it's a great view. Uh, you should be able to walk on it if it's your yard. I can see not letting people drive there, right? We had too many tourists coming to the island, not practicing social distancing. Amy Lou said, I want chickens. So lucky. <laughs> so jealous. Lucky girl. Cindy Bennett said, I love chickens, but they attract other animals. So it is a battle. Yes. I'm a little bit thinking about just insects with my garden. Okay, here we go. This is our first unhealthy item I'm putting on there, but they know what Coca-Cola is. So yeah, I'm afraid of, well, I know in our yard, we sort of, we have like bees and wasps, but I know that'll be good for my garden, but I don't want to sort of attract them closer to our house. You know what I mean? I tell my kids not to be afraid of them, but just to stay away from them. You know what I mean? Kind of like coronavirus. My kids don't know the word coronavirus, though, because ignorance is bliss. Okay. I'm going to hold this up so you can see see what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm painting on the glue first. Oops. And I'm putting it on here. Now, if you want to do Mod Podge, you could do this just with Elmer's glue and just paint it with a regular paintbrush or a sponge brush. Or if you wanted to use Mod Podge, you could get some at the at Walmart in the craft section. If you are in a state that has not totally cracked down on craft supplies, I never thought I'd live to see the day that there are laws against buying craft supplies and gardening supplies. I'm kind of like, wow. I get it, but once again, wow. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, we understand the reasons behind these laws, but we're a little bit starting to miss our freedoms. You know what I mean? Yes, wasps help pollinate. That's what I'm saying. Good for the garden. That's what I meant. They pollinate. So just not good if, if they sting the babies. <sighs> so I want to turn my home into like huge garden and like playground type thing. Like I definitely want to get either like a porch swing or like a swing set for my kids. I keep going back and forth. Um, it's kind of like if the parks were going to open up soon, we wouldn't need to do something like that. But if it's going to be a lot more months, like I want to do that for my kids because they keep asking to go to the playground. Well, my two year old keeps asking because he doesn't comprehend it. And I just, I want to, I want more exercise type things we can do, right? Wait, I also got canning jars. I just want to not like them, not like what? Get the swing set, I love swing sets, keeps the kids busy, yes. And, um, so I'm thinking um, once we get like the stimulus check money, um, 
guys, I, I will say to you guys, <clears throat> and it feels sad just even saying it out loud, but don't keep all of your savings in the bank. Um, keep some in a safe or a jar or wherever in your home. Don't tell me where you put it, but <laughs> don't. But um, once you have an extra hundred thousand dollars or whatever, instead of keeping it all in the bank, um, keep some in cash. The reason I say that is because um, the banks are already overwhelmed by giving loans to all of the small businesses that um, Chase Bank and U.S. Bank are already turning people away and saying, yeah. Okay, Amy Lou said, Evelyn, you need to do a sunflower teepee with the kids. I've been meaning to tell you that. It's super easy. What is a sunflower teepee? Do tell, do tell. Do you plant sunflowers to make the sunflower teepee? Tell me what this is. Okay, so now I'm putting, because I started off with a lot of like fruit. Now I'm putting like some meat on there. Because you know we talk about meat with VIP Kid. So this is just, especially for extension when talking about food or talking about favorite food, something I can hold up when I say, what's your favorite food? Um, so, or, you know, with, I can use this with older and younger students. I, I, I am a certification hoarder. So I have like, I don't have level eight, but I have all the other levels. Um, and I do teach upper and lower levels. Um, and the lower levels talk about food and the upper levels talk about food and having something like this for extension could be really useful. Like what's your favorite food? What foods do you like? And that way I can point to it and be like, do you like meat? So that if they don't know that word, I'm very much a visual learner. Don't know if you picked up on that yet. So obviously I use that a lot in my teaching style. That's why I'm a a uh, prop queen, prop hoarder, whatever you want to call it. I prefer prop queen because it makes me sound less psychotic. Um, but see, like, do you like chicken? You know, KFC, right? They have KFC in, in, uh, but look, I'll be like, this is what Chinese food looks like in America. Nothing like what you eat, right? Except for the rice. So funny that what we view as Chinese food here. I even had like my friend when I was in college, um, I had a friend in college with me that was from China and we went to a Chinese restaurant and we said, is this what the food's like where you're from? And she's like, um, well, I'm from Southern China, maybe Northern China has food like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was kind of like, mm, not exactly. We don't exactly eat like that, but okay. You know, and they say like fortune cookies are not a thing in China. That's like an American invention. So funny. But it's funny because my students, I'll ask them, what's your favorite food? And they'll say like McDonald's or like pizza or KFC or something. And I'll say, that's so funny because my family, our favorite food is Chinese food. And we love going to the Chinese restaurant. And it's so funny. We appreciate each other's food, right? Oh, yes. Plant sunflowers. Very good. Um, the places I went to buy seeds don't have sunflower seeds, so I would have to order it online. I have to disagree with keeping large sums at home. My boyfriend is a broker and a trader. He talks with JP Morgan almost every day. Oh, okay. Very good. I mean, very good. Just, I know that a lot of banks are, um, Look, a picture of rice. I mean, I hope nothing. I I mean, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And if you if you, if you're prepared and nothing happens, oh well, you were prepared, right? I don't wanna I don't I don't wanna see anything bad happen with the economy. But I don't know when or if people are all going to get back to work. You know what I mean? 
And I'm not trying to be negative on this video, but this is kind of one of the only times I get to talk to adults, you know what I mean? And and um, there's a lot of things in my head. And um, there's some watermelon. I found a piece of watermelon for my picture. Anyway, this is exactly five apples. So I'm not sure, like, obviously I didn't plan this out, so I'm not sure whether or not I'll fill up all the white space with what I have cut out, but I can always cut out more and put it on here later, you know. It's a work in progress, you know what I mean? I don't know how long it takes for the live show to show up. Oh, I wanted to say that. Yes. If you did not hear me say this before, I should probably just make an announcement in our group. Okay. I've been worried and freaked out about that too. Um, so before it used to take 30 minutes for a, a live video to process and post. Um, but lately I've been experiencing, it takes about 24 hours, unfortunately. Um, because YouTube is also working on a skeleton staff from home. And so a lot of things is run by bots and stuff. So things are working slower on YouTube's end. And also they've been marking some videos as copyright when it's not what's that babe i'm in the house i didn't leave i didn't run away tempting tempting just kidding yes i'm here i snuck upstairs while the baby was sleeping and daddy was on the phone and the kids are watching tv and eating i'm like i'm gonna go craft so i didn't exactly tell anyone i didn't run very far away <laughs> Oh, look, some potatoes. I have these potatoes, and then I have a bag of potatoes. I'm putting both because I can. I do what I want. Okay. So I'm thankful for the Internet that we can hang out with our friends online. Um, I'm faith very thankful for video chat. I'm thankful for an online job. Aren't you? I'm thank very, 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 very thankful for good health. And I'm starting to more and more every day think that good health is a hot commodity. <laughs> that is like kind of like somehow, um, somehow we're still healthy right now. And that is a huge blessing because it's starting, it's starting to seem more and more like like we are healthy beyond all odds, if that makes any sense. It's like we're beating the odds and we're some of the healthy ones. We're still, we're still okay. Somehow we are still okay. We're making it. We're making it in a time that everybody's getting sick. That's what it feels like. Maybe, maybe I'm crazy, but that's what it feels like. I'm going to trim some of this off. I don't know if you feel that way, but it, I mean, it's so funny how when you're healthy every day, all the time, it's kind of like you forget to thank God that you're healthy because it's like the normal thing. But when everyone around you, according to the news is sick and meeting their maker, whatever you want to say, whenever, when everything is going bad and you're healthy, then it's kind of like, wow, I'm, I'm healthy. And that's like shockingly amazing. It's like, I'm, it's like I won the lottery that I'm healthy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how am I healthy right now? Thank you, Jesus. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Hey, look, I filled up the whole space with pretty much all of the things I cut out. So yeah. So now comes step two, which is go over it with the Mod Podge. Now, if you are one that wants to do this in a different way, you could use a wider brush for this next part. And here's the deal. I have wider brushes, right? I bought them. But, okay, I like the wider brushes for smoothing it out. Um, but I'm just going to use the one brush. Why? 
because using a sponge brush and um anyway using a sponge brush with Mod Podge pretty much destroys it. You can soak it in water, you can reuse it a few times, but it, it is pretty much trash after using it. So if I use two sponge brushes, it's like wasting two brushes on one project. So that's why, you know, normally in the past, I would use two brushes, one thin one and one big one. But right now I'm conserving art supplies because Anywhere I can save money. I'm I'm th I'm thinking like a money saver lately, you know. I'm just trying to cut corners with saving money, and it's like if I can use one brush instead of two, I'm gonna do it. If I can reuse this brush, I'm gonna do it. Whereas before, I would use the brush one time and toss it. Now I'm like, I'm gonna use this for multiple projects. I'm gonna soak it in water and reuse it again. <laughs> and it's just it's like a twenty five cent brush. You know what I mean? So anyway, very grateful for being an online teacher and established before all this started. Right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um, and I don't want to get political. So the thing that just popped in my head, I'm not going to say. But um, it's just. Anyway. The whole world is having a rough time right now. And it's interesting how it's kind of unifying in my mind, maybe not for everyone. But I feel a connection to China. <laughs> I feel a connection to India. I feel a connection to everybody that has to stay home and can't take their kids to the park. And like, I watched a video yesterday of kids in India staying home in their apartment. And they were, they made a video, like kind of like a YouTube video. It was on Facebook. They made a video showing other kids things that they can do when they're staying home. They're like, this is my little sister and we like to dance. This is how we dance. And we like to go on our balcony and use our binoculars and look at birds. It was like a seven-year-old girl and her like three-year-old sister or something. And she said, we like to do crafts. And it showed them like doing crafts at the table. And I'm like, you know, the world isn't a whole lot different than each other because we've got like American kids and Chinese kids and kids in India are kind of like going through the same thing, doing the same kinds of things lately, spending more time with their parents. They're not going to school, you know, figuring out how to have a good old fashioned childhood at home. Right. And it's new for them because they've grown up in this society that that they go to school all day long and they see their parents in the evenings and on the weekends and early in the mornings and so this is new to i mean it's kind of like a summer like an early summer it's new to stay home but even in the summer you have activities you have camps you have you know grocery shopping going to the and and we as as women as mothers and even fathers we're getting back to the kitchen. We're starting cooking more because suddenly it's kind of risky to buy fast food. So why chance it, right? And and it's like, and if you're not going anywhere, fast food was something you buy like on your way somewhere when you're going, when you're staying home, it only makes sense to cook, right? But you can't go to restaurants, you know? Um, and so we're figuring out the every day, all the time cooking in the kitchen thing. And maybe other people did that all the time, but I know a lot of us didn't, you know what I mean? So that's partly why I've been making YouTube videos of what I'm making because it's like, well, I'm a low income mom trying to feed a bunch of mouths. So maybe what I'm making in the kitchen with ramen noodles and chicken and vegetables. Maybe I should share that recipe to share the idea with other low income mamas and, or just with my friends to share ideas. Cause like if they, if other people post what they're cooking, it's going to give me an idea of something I can make because we're all in this together. <laughs> That's a song from, from high school musical. We're all in this together. So it kind of a little bit, not to bring back, bring up a dark time, but it reminds me of 9-11. That was a long time ago. I was in middle school. But I remember all of America, 
uh, this horrible terrorist attack tragedy happened in our in our country, and for about a year, all of America was like, "United we stand." Do you remember that phrase? It was on bumper stickers. It was everywhere. "United we stand." Everybody started going back to church and everything. "United we stand." It was like we needed each other. We were all going through this horrible loss together. And then now we're going through it. It's like united with the whole world. And maybe I'm one of the only people that feels that way. But I really feel like we're all going through this rough time at the same time. So that's pretty much finished. The reason this is lighter over here is that's what I started with. It's already starting to dry. So now I'm going to close this. But, you know, I'm conserving my glue <laughs> by wiping it off and also trying to conserve the sponge. Now, automatically, I'm sticking the sponge in water. I've got some other brushes. Okay, so before I would use paper towels, now I have this one cloth that I use for my paint brushes instead of using paper towels. So again, like conserving stuff, even though I have paper towels right now. Okay, another thing is um, I would normally use a paper towel for this, but you know, saving money. I'm wiping off the glue along the top because sometimes this bottle gets glued shut and then I need my husband's help to open it. And if he's at work, I, I can't open my art supply and I need it. Anyway. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint stars onto my universe. Universe? One of the reasons I'm painting stars is because there's a little bit of like wrinkling on the page and painting stars on is going to draw the eye away from those wrinkles or to camouflage them. The wrinkles happened because of the glue on top. So the glue setting on top of the paper um, made it begin to wrinkle. And also that right there, that collage is also doing that a little bit, but not very much. <sighs> So my four-year-old's crying. Emma, are you okay, baby? She throws fits a lot. Can you share with her so she can be happy? Oh, don't watch Halloween. That's why it's like the kid, the boy that cried wolf. Like, if you want me to come running to save you when you cry, maybe don't throw fits over things that don't matter. Like, what's on the TV? Just a thought. That's why, like, if I'm sometimes on a video and my kids cry in the background and I don't drop everything and come fix their problems, I'm a little bit trying to teach my kids independence. So I got out a small, thin brush because I'm just putting little bitty dots all over. Also, I have a different yellow that is sort of a yellow, this yellow right here, that gets a little bit transparent on paper and that can be convenient for some things. This is a yellow that has some white in it. It's like a white yellow. And so it's not transparent. So with the black background, this is gonna pop out better. So that's why I chose to use this yellow. I originally bought this yellow first, and then I painted a dino with it and realized it's not the brighter yellow that I like for the dino. It's kind of a whitish yellow, kind of a banana yellow. So I bought a brighter yellow, but this one is perfect for the stars. Oh, this is looking nice. So there's no rhyme or reason as to where I'm putting the stars, but I'm a little bit social distancing them, if you will. <laughs> in the future when I feel like when my kids are adults and they have kids they're going to be telling them about this time like you are so lucky you don't even know how well you have it you can go anywhere you want to you can go to the playground you can play outside and you just want to stay home and stay on your iPad do you know how boring that is if you have to do that five months in a row you know what I mean not speaking that into existence but you know Okay, so I have to tell you, one of my students went back to school, and so he told me that they have PE class three days a week. He's 13, so I guess he's a middle schooler, and he told me that he won, he scored the winning goal in soccer 
playing soccer in, in PE class. So that was pretty cool, pretty amazing. Pretty hopeful for us to hear China getting back to their old normal. Although I saw photos of kids back to school in China and they were wearing masks and they were social distancing. So wasn't exactly their normal military style, no masks sitting at attention that they normally have. That looks pretty nice. I think that looks lovely. What do you think? I feel like that improved the picture, right? Very good. Oh, my friends. The world is not what it was two months ago, but you know what? We're going to be okay. We're going to make it. We're resilient too, not just the kids. We can learn something from our children. We can be resilient too. Maybe we will find out our secret strengths. Kind of like um, when you have a baby, <laughs> you don't realize how strong the human body is until you go through all that pain and realize how powerful you can be, right? We're kind of going through labor pains right now. We're going through some really rough times and we're going to find out how strong we are at by the end of this, right? As we get through it. My four-year-old is crying and I finished my artwork. So I'm going to go down and give my little girl a hug. Her love language is physical touch. So I'm going to go give her a hug until she calms her little self down. Anyway, thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for the thumbs up. Love you guys. Bye.